Today, the scripture calls us to reflect on how we live our life. And there was, in the last century, a moral theologian, Gustav A. Fuchs, who taught moral theology. And he spoke about the fact that there was a fundamental option. In fact, it was an idea that, that was embraced by the Second Vatican Council, that everyone has a fundamental option, a basic choice to make in life. Are we headed toward God or away from God? And, you know, uh, people would say, well, how, you know, how do I know? I, I still do things that are wrong. I still sin. Well, I'm going to say, you know, there are very few things that have a straight line. If I want to go to Flint, there's no direct route. <laughs> you know, I have to turn here and turn there and, you know, it's all these detours around to get to where I want to go. And that's the same for life. It's rarely in a straight line. But the question is, is my choice, my fundamental choice for God? And that's what that first reading is talking about. You know, if a virtuous person turns away from that fundamental choice and heads the opposite direction, yes. If one who is gone astray, realizes and turns and directs their life toward God, they will be saved. It's not little things we're talking about. It's that fundamental option, that basic direction of my life. And that's what we're called to do. But Jesus calls us a little bit further, you know, to walk in his footsteps. And that can be a little more difficult. To walk in his footsteps means that I, I live the way he did. And we know that he treated people with great respect and kindness. That was, I think, one of the great hallmarks uh, of Jesus. You know, I've always wondered what was there. There must have been not a halo, but an aura about him that just attracted people to him. That when they came into that, that aura, that sphere of his goodness, you know, they, they felt a sense of welcome, of compassion, of kindness. There was something about Jesus that was almost magnetic, and people were drawn to him. And it was ultimately in the way he embraced people. You know, we see him again and again step beyond the bounds of his society, even to the point of, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we heard that story about the, the leper, or last week we heard it, you know, where the leper says, if you will to do so, you can cure me. And Jesus seems to get angry with him, you know. What do you mean, if I... And, and really, I think what it was about was, if you want to touch me. You know, and Jesus says, of course, I'll touch you. But remember, lepers had to go around yelling, unclean, unclean. And Jesus said, you know, of course I will embrace you in your pain and in your suffering. When Francis of Assisi would encounter a leper along the way in his early years, as he directed his life more and more in the pattern of Christ, there's that story about how one time he encountered a leper and at first was you know, just thrown off by the, you know, this figurement of this person. And he went up and embraced him because he knew that that is what Christ would do as well. You know, his goal was to walk in the footsteps of Christ. And I'm going to say uh, I'm no saint, but I, I try to do that. And I think those of you here and those of you watching online, <clears throat> you wouldn't be doing that if you weren't trying to do that. But today we hear the encouragement of the Lord inviting us to do it even more so, to walk in his footsteps, you know, to treat others with kindness and respect so that in the end, we will treat them like the Lord would treat them. That's the invitation. And so today, you know, we celebrate the fact that our lives are directed to God. We wouldn't be here if that weren't true. But even more so, it's not just in that direction. It's walking more faithfully, more fully in the steps of the Lord so that following his example, 
we might come to share with him in the glory of the kingdom. That's our prayer and our hope that we celebrate this day.